What's up, guys? Welcome to another awesome edition of Worth a Watch with me, Tone Flores. It has been a uh, a good start to the year. I've had a few Blu-ray updates already up and ready for you guys, and uh, I forgot. I gotta. I kind of have to get the best of list out of the way. There was so many good films in 2011 that it was just so hard for honestly for me to pick. But this list is gonna be my top 15 best films. Of 2011. Why 15? I don't know. I just decided that nobody's really doing that. Obviously, for those of you who actually watch my videos on a consistent basis, you obviously know these are not scripted. It's all improvised stuff. So, this is going to be my first video with an attempt of using a semi-scripted format. So, therefore, those of you who watch me, I appreciate if you just sit back and enjoy... What the hell does that say? Yeah, this is going to be a kind of a difficult show for me. Either way, here we go. He's going the distance. Uh, he's going for speed. She's all Just to mention to you guys, for those of you who may or may not have that understanding of how these lists work, this is all my opinion only, and this is how this list is going to go. These were the movies just based on re replay values, uh, how relatable they were to me, my personal experiences in life, and all that stuff and you know how they affected me in general and how they moved me or made me laugh or made me cry made me just just make my jaw drop and just say holy shit that was awesome so that's it's just a wide variety of reasons why these movies are on my top 15 list number 15 on the list is source code the second directorial effort from duncan jones the director of moon another critically acclaimed smaller film but uh, I, I saw the film and I thought it was really awesome, it was really intriguing. And this one, uh, definitely more out there, more of a mainstream kind of film versus Moon. But I gotta hand it to Junkin Jones for using the same type of format of replaying the same eight minutes at least about five times over, six times over, I can't quite remember. 7.48 this morning, a bomb exploded on a train outside of Chicago, killing everyone on board. <laughs> What is my mission? A secret program called the Source Code will send you back in time to relive the last eight minutes of a passenger's life on that train. Find the bomb, and you'll find the bomber. Either way, Jake Gyllenhaal, Vera Far Farmiga, Michelle Monaghan, and Jeffrey Wright, they all do great performances here. And just the whole, it's just a well-crafted sci-fi thriller. Towers, if you find the bomber, the next attack can be prevented. As always, you will have eight minutes. <laughs> It's the same train, but it's different. You're kind of freaking me out. I want to go back in. I'm going to save her. You can't. Doesn't work that way. Christina is dead. Try and stop me. Sean! Get back! Source code. Even if it's the same eight minutes, the stuff that goes down in this film, I won't spoil anything for you guys, but it is intense every time. And that is why the superb crafting of, the, of this film, keeping it entertaining as well as just wondering what's going to happen next, that is the biggest thing, the positive thing from this film, as well as their performances and the direction from Duncan Jones. Next up, number 14 on the list is Super 8. This was the only movie that I actually had a special screening for last summer, and man, was it worth the wait. This is an homage to old school Steven Spielberg films, and J.J. Abrams directing as well as Spielberg producing. I was sold for this movie. I was so glad to, to be in a screening for this. And, of course, the alien mystery thing was a big deal back then, when it first was released. And... action! Guys, watch out! Oh, go, go! Just the intensity of this adventure type film combined with the whole sci-fi mystery involved with it just seeing uh, the main child actors they were good child actors as well all of the kids you really enjoyed their their chemistry on screen and just also the main kid of the film he go he goes through these really emotional situations or with all that and more the mystery of it all the sci-fi epic uh, scenes that happen in this film mainly the train scene for one as you've seen in the trailer it's just the cast in general was great the direction was superb. It was just a great take on this sci-fi adventure genre that really hasn't been just used to its advantage enough. And this really had a very Goonie style to it. 
and that's where the homage to Steven Spielberg films took place, etc., etc. It is just a well, well done film. It, especially, you just don't see films like these anymore. Just where the child actors are actually good, and they actually, you root for them throughout this film, hoping they'll make it through this crazy alien adventure. We have to find this thing. How do we feel good about this? Go! I saw it. No one believes me. I believe you. What the hell? It's crazy, it's good, it's awesome, it's fun, it's entertaining, and then most of all, it's just very genuine. Number 13 on my list is... Many of you may hate me for not putting this higher, but it is... Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Thus. This is an a action fantasy epic if I ever saw one. On this night, join me and confront your fate. Did any of you to die for me? It is an amazing end to an excellent franchise. Me personally, though, one of the biggest reasons why it's not higher on this list is, for one, I was not the biggest Harry Potter fan. Yeah, sure, many of you out there on the internet may say, "Oh, you look like it, man. You look like you're one of those." really overkill Harry Potter fans, but I am not. I honestly, I've never read the books, I've never even bothered, and but I did enjoy the films. I grew up with them, and they were really great family films at first, and then they grew into these really great action epic films. The last three films were a game changer. They really intertwined so well as one giant movie for, for me, and I really thought that that alone is what sold me on this franchise, wanting to see what's going to happen next. And as a person who is just a fan of the films and not so much anything else, this sold me and I really wanted to see every movie that happens after, all the way to the end. Come on, Tom. Let's finish this the way we started. Together! What I, of course, liked about the film is, the, of course, the entire cast. The, they all have done and come such a long way from the starting when they were all young kids till now when you're young adults, just tackling these roles with emotional depth and just really awesome, just awesome acting, just really well done. Alan Rickman, the guy deserves some sort of Oscar nomination. It was just such a freaking... I don't know how to describe it. It was just... An amazing performance and I really think he deserves some credit in the Oscars. The entire film to me is it is just just epic all the way to the final scene. It is it held such a strong creative force for 10 years and that alone as well as a great conclusion like this film deserves a lot of credit and for that that is why it's in my top 15 list. Number 12 on my list is Crazy Stupid Love. It's a romantic comedy with substance. What, what was the last movie that actually had something like that? Yeah, of course, 500 Days of Summer. But in this film, you got Steve Carell, who is, who, both him and Julianne Moore play a married couple who soon comes to a crossroads, which leads for them to end up in divorce. 25 years of marriage and you have nothing to say? I'll just say it. I slept with someone. If you keep cow, talking, but, I'm gonna get I, out of the car. I think the fact that I did it, it just shows how broken we are. Okay. How much, how much we really, oh my God! You're getting a divorce? Yeah. Amy heard you crying in the bathroom. We all thought it was cancer. Oh. Thank God, man. Yeah, <laughs> just my relationship. <laughs> but due to this, Steve Carell ends up basically alone and kind of a social wreck. But little by little, he just ends up going down a very, very bad, 
very bad place. To the separation from his wife and just wanting to just be with her, but he can because you know how divorce situations go. But with a great role from Ryan Gosling, for all of us guys, we wish we could be like him in this film. He comes and just willingly just helps Steve Carell, making quit, he just comes over and just tells him, hey, I'm here to help you not be an, not be a drunken, sad, pathetic asshole. He teaches him how to be a confident person and helps him pick up women, talk to women in general. Uh, little by little, Steve Carell does realize he does just want to be with his wife, even though if he hates her, but he still loves her, if that even makes any sense. But then to come around and realize the reason for their divorce, Kevin Bacon. BACON! Uh, I guess Kevin Bacon this past year really decided to be the villain, as you'll find out later on in this list, because I have two more movies where he plays the a-hole. I guess, what can I say, he's good at it, I guess. He ends up, Ryan Gosling ends up going through his own little love trials and tribulations. Dave Chappelle. Uh, with Emma Stone there. There's lots of beautiful women in this bar, but I can't take my eyes off of you. It's time to go home. Oh, it's forward of you, but okay. Yeah. Should uh, I pull the car around? Have you been drinking? I'll drive. It just, by the time it all ends, guys, it has some really clever dialogue, and it's got some really understanding focus points about love, and just, uh, there's a really clever twist that M. Night Shyamalan see, probably could have come up with back in his good days. Of, it was that good where it just throws you off, and you're just like, what the fuck just happened? All I can say is, by the end of this film, I was just, it, it's a really upbeat, surprisingly romantic comedy. And <laughs> I don't know what it is. It just worked and overall it just proves something. Is that love can be romantic but also very serious and it also can be many things such as kind of crazy and kind of stupid at the same time. People, number 11, X-Men First Class. One of the best action films of the year. And in my perspective, this is the best action film of the year. I, for whatever reason, that's what it is. But a prequel with some effort put into it and it turns out to be better than a sequel and yet another prequel. If that doesn't say how good this movie is, I don't know what does. James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, man. These guys were perfect for these younger versions of these roles that previously played by Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen, respectively. to become part of something much bigger than yourself. What do you know about me? Everything. They, these two guys were meant to play these roles. This is the younger versions of Professor Xavier and Magneto. They stole this film. It was like a buddy type comedy drama, if that even makes any sense. But then there's also some great coming of age stuff going on in here. There's also some great period style pieces and going on in here. Some action set pieces. The 1960s were definitely a time of controversy. Then there's Bacon, the villain. Yes, Magneto technically becomes a villain later on, but Bacon's the one who starts all this shit that goes down in this film. So what can I say? As I said, he does it well. You can't complain. He's a great villain. Overall, the acting is just solid. I can't really have a bad thing to say about the acting. Whether they be minor characters or main characters up in front, dead center. Although, I gotta say, January Jones, you're very, very hot and voluptuous, but your acting kind of sucks. The special effects, awesome. The, just the cameos in this film, pitch perfectly awesome. The, just some of the most memorable cameos I could ever remember in recent years. Just, on, in general, I, along with many X-Men fans, I have never read comic books much, but I have enjoyed every film since the first one in 2000 and now. But this film gave us hope and we got a great X-Men film once again. Listen to me very carefully, my friend. Killing will not bring you peace. Peace was never an option. Matthew Vaughn's direction, just overall the great, overall majority, great acting, great special effects, and it just helps us 
fans of film as well as X-Men fans in general and that it can almost just barely make us forget the last two films ever existed.